Have you ever wondered what uh, is the human consciousness? What is consciousness? What is human consciousness? To be conscious is to be aware. And the general term for a person's thoughts, emotions, sensations, and a general awareness is human consciousness. Scripture does not uh, explicitly define what human consciousness is, although the Bible provides uh, perspectives on, on, on the same. And a biblical view of human consciousness might be summarized as a <clears throat> the soul's awareness of itself and its surroundings. However, defining human consciousness is notoriously difficult. Exploring consciousness means uh, probing the deepest questions about what it means to be human. And such discussion typically, uh, typically uh, involves a long list of mysteries and uh, dilemmas. And some concepts are unresolved. Others present a competing of apparent, apparently contradictory truths. And the Bible gives us practical ways to understand some, some such issues. On other details, scripture is silent and uh, we are left to untangle questions on our own. Biblical terms related to this subject should be carefully understood, especially according to their intimate context. And uh, ancient terminology did not distinguish between the mind and the heart to the same extent, uh, which is seen in modern languages. That's not to say emotions and intellect were never distinguished. Rather, it means that uh, words translated as heart in scripture are not necessarily references to pure feeling. In some cases, what the Bible refers as, uh, to the heart, a modern writer might well label as the mind. When it touches on human consciousness, the scripture describes it as follows. Uh, we can say that human consciousness is part of being made in the image of God. Genesis 1.27, it tells us, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created him, male and female created he them. And also Psalms 139 verse 14, it says, I will praise you for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works and that my soul knoweth right well. So human beings are composed of uh, distinct yet unified members such as the body, soul, and the spirit. And there is an intimate and unavoidable connection between those members. Yet they are not identical. And this is similar to relationship among the members of the Trinity. And it contracts uh, both with the entirely physical animals and entirely uh, spiritual angels. Another aspect of this image bearing is that man is capable of self-awareness and objective thinking. And number two, we understand that human consciousness is influenced. It's not in initiated or initiated by the body, we may say. Because when you look at the, the book of Romans, chapter 7, verse 23, it says, But I see another law in my members, warring against the law of my mind, and bringing me into captivity to the law of sin, which is in my members. Hmm. So, is this not meaning that it is not influenced? Human consciousness is not another law coming into this law, you see? <laughs> and also we see Ephesians chapter uh, 5 verse 8 says and be not drunk with wine wherein in excess but be filled with the spirit so there are two types of things here one law is telling you to get drunk and another one is telling you get filled with the spirit all right and also when you look at uh, 1 Corinthians 6 12 it says all things are lawful unto me but all things are not expedient all things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. You see, there are two angles here. And physical factors influence awareness and thinking. However, the consciousness is not the same uh, thing as the material body, nor is it a controlled, mindless effect of material possesses. And myriad questions about these relationships are, are often referred to as the mind-body problem. And... Uh, 
something else we can learn about the uh, human consciousness is that it is di- distinct from the self <laughs> all right it is very distinct from the self when we look at colossians chapter 3 verse 2 it says set your affection on things above not on things on the earth you see there are two kinds of entities or or or, or beings in one one who wants to set uh, the affections on things below and another on things above all right so the one which is wants to set things below is the self so the human consciousness is very different and also when you look at uh, first peter uh, verse 1 13 uh, it says uh, wherefore guard up the loins of your minds be sober and hope and i hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought to you at the revelation of jesus christ and also romans chapter 12 verse 2 it says and be not conformed to this world to this world but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what uh, that is good and acceptable and perfect will of god all right so be ye transformed mm, from one consciousness to another Mm-hmm. You get in the point here. So our conscious thoughts are something other than our own self. We are aware of this distinction. Human beings can de- deliberately influence their own thoughts and perspectives and we retain some level of control over such things. Or at least we can deliberate, seek to change them. And uh, something else we can learn about human consciousness is... Uh, that it is perceived only by the individual and God. Only you and God can perceive this. In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 16, verse 7, it says, But the Lord said unto Samuel, Look not on his countenance or on the height of his statue, because I have refused him. For the Lord sees not as man sees, for man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. Mm-hmm seeing the point there and also first corinthians 2 verse 11 says for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god john seven twenty four it says judge not according to their appearance but judge righteous judgment righteous judgment mm-hmm. now an enormous barrier to scientific study of consciousness it is that it cannot be directly measured or observed it can only be subjectively reported by the consciousness itself likewise no human being can ever know with absolute certainty what other person is feeling or thinking this is fundamental reason to be cautious when attempting to judge others romans chapter 14 verse 4 it says who art thou that judges another man's servant to his own master he standeth or falleth yeah he shall be holden up for god is able to make him stand and also john 7 24 says judge not according to the appearance but judge righteous judgment so are you getting the point here i'm trying to look as many ways to understand human consciousness now let me give you another way that you can understand human consciousness as well we, we, we know that human consciousness is not the same as the conscience. Consciousness is not the same as conscience. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 2, it says, Speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron. So if conscience can be seared with a hot iron, is that consciousness? No. And also 1 Samuel 25, verse 31 says, that this shall be no grief unto thee, nor offense of heart unto my Lord, neither uh, either that thou sh- uh, hast shed blood causeless, or that my Lord has avenged himself. But when the Lord shall have dealt well with my Lord, then remember thine handmaid. Mm-hmm. All right. So we understand with these facts that the conscience is one narrow part of consciousness. And the conscience is a God-given emotional reaction to conflict between our values and our thoughts and actions. And uh, one more final thing to ponder about consciousness is that uh, human consciousness is an integrated part of the whole. Of the whole, okay, 
is an integrated part of the whole. Now, let's look at Matthew chapter 22, verse 37. We see the Bible saying, Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love thy Lord thy God with all thine heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. All right? And Hebrews 4, verse 12 says, For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow, and is a designer of the thoughts and intents of the heart. And Matthew chapter uh, 103 verse 1 says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me. Bless his holy name. So having understood this, we know that while scripture Im- implicitly distinguishes between mind, body, and soul, and spirit, uh, intellect, heart, and so forth, all these are meant to be entirely focused on the will of God. So far, our daily lives are concerned. Uh, fine-tuned distinctions between these are irrelevant. All that we are and that which we can control should be submitted to God to the best of our ability. And the relationship between soul, spirit, mind, and body includes human consciousness and is indescribably complex. And the existence of consciousness, at least uh, our own individual consciousness, is impossible to deny. When philosopher René Descartes attempted to create an absolute starting point for all human knowledge, he began with the self-evidence of his own human consciousness. He said, and I quote, I think therefore I am. Mm. And the Bible may not give details on the nature of consciousness, but it accurately reflects ideas that our experience confirms. And that's the end of our today's Bible study lesson. Hope it was a blessing to you. Hope you did learn something. And remember, you can always download this podcast to listen later offline or to share to your friends and family. And please don't forget to favorite our podcast and subscribe to our channel so that you can always be notified whenever we post a new Bible study lesson. And if you'd like to get saved or you need to get a step-by-step Bible verses on the order of salvation so that you can well preach to your friends or family, or maybe you just feel led to support our ministry or buy some cool Christian merchandise, kindly visit our website, keithmuoki.com, for more details and breakdown. Otherwise, I hope to see you soon in the next one.